Hello, Brandon Lee here with Virtualization How To and wanted to come to you guys with a vSphere security video today. So recently, within the last couple of days, we've had a major vCenter server security bug that has hit the wild, actually. There are actually reports of attackers now exploiting this particular vulnerability, uh, especially the one that's detailed in CVE 2021-22005. And this is part of the VMSA Security Advisory from VMware 2021-0020.1. And I'll, I'll link to this in the video description. Uh, but basically, this is a really, really nasty bug uh, from a security perspective that you want to get patched. In fact, if you notice in the VMSA that I have pulled up, this one scores 9.8 out of 10. So it's just about as bad as it gets. So what is it? Well, it's essentially a vulnerability that allows an attacker with only network access to your vCenter server of an affected version to be able to upload specially crafted files to what is called the analytics services, if you notice here in uh, part of this documentation. So if they're able to upload this specially crafted file, they're able to run arbitrary commands and code and essentially just take over your uh, vCenter server. So not good at all. Uh, definitely one of the worst case scenarios, especially due to how easy this is to uh, exploit only network access. So what I wanted to do, uh, aside from giving that uh, very brief overview, is I wanted to uh, just dive in uh, just for a few minutes on some best practices uh, for your vCenter server. Now, many best practices out there. Uh, you can go on to the VMware documentation uh, site and find many great best practices, uh, guides and configuration uh, templates basically to go by uh, to configure your vCenter server. But I wanted to detail three things that I have seen uh, in environments that I have managed or consulted with, um, things that to me are some really low hanging fruit that a lot of the environments out there can essentially have a drastic improvement in security with not too much effort. And so what are those three things? Well, number one, uh, one thing that you want to do is always keep your vCenter server up to date. So I'm logging into the VAMI interface that we've long uh, described it as, port 5480. Uh, log into VAMI, uh, you have the update option. And if you go over here and check CD-ROM and URL, it will pull the latest updates. Now, as you can see, I am already patched in the lab environment to the version that is remediated from the uh, critical bug, uh, the emergency patch. So, but quick and easy way to improve your security stance with vCenter is make sure you're updating your vCenter appliance, plain and simple add it to your patch schedule. Really, vCenter, it, it kind of intimidates people uh, just a bit when, you know, environments I've worked in, people are a bit hands off with vCenter, but actually vCenter, the way VMware has architected vSphere is very easy to take down. It's easy to update with little to no impact uh, in your environment nothing that anyone is going to be able to see. Um, so your consumers, your end users, they're not gonna notice that you've taken vCenter down, that you're patching it, so on and so forth. So quick win for security. Now, another uh, best practice that I wanna just briefly highlight is having network segmentation for your vCenter server. Uh, as you see here, and it is the case with so many of the bugs with vCenter and other management solutions, network level access allows an attacker to uh, 
access things that they shouldn't access. So segmenting your network, uh, what do I mean by that? Well, lots of SME environments, many that I'm sure you guys have worked in and perhaps even been given to manage is a super flat uh, slash 23 slash 24, whatever the case is, that has everything, servers, client workstations. Um, I've even seen IoT devices running on the same segment as your business critical servers. Just crazy things like that. Uh, and the same with vCenter. Make sure that you take vCenter off of your production land where everything else is. Have a, have a management network. Carve out a, net, a management network. Only allow management to uh, vCenter on that particular management network. That way, if an attacker compromises your uh, client operating systems uh, on that flat network that everything else is housed on, they're not able, at least easily, uh, at least just blindfolded easily, able to just get to your vCenter server. So network segmentation is, is key here, uh, guys. Um, best practice, get your vCenter off of your flat network that everything else is on. I want to mention just a couple other network related tidbits. vSphere 7 introduced the ability to add additional network adapters to vCenter server rather easily. So it helps to also, um, I guess, not excuse this, you know, there's no more excuse to say, well, it's difficult to control or re-architect the way vCenter uh, connects to the network. That's no longer the case. You can add network adapters. You can change the way management is reaching your vCenter server. So do yourself a favor, make use of that tool. There's also, if you're not able to uh, take vCenter off of your flat production network, use the firewall built into vCenter. It works. It may be a little bit cumbersome to manage, but at the end of the day, you can effectively keep specific network objects or addresses from accessing your vCenter server. All right, so that's network, network segmentation. What else uh, do we need to give attention to? Well, one of the other things that I see that uh, is, is scary anymore with uh, the ransomware uh, that can attack vSphere environments, that has been shown to be able to attack vSphere, uh, vSphere environments, uh, especially with this critical bug that has uh, come to light in the last couple of days. Credentials that are shared between vSphere as well as Active Directory environments. I'm not a fan of that, and I'll tell you why. If you have a high-level credential, set of credentials in Active Directory that uh, is also granted permissions uh, to your uh, vSphere environment uh, and you have that Active Directory integration to be able to uh, manage and administer your vCenter environment, if those credentials are uh, compromised, that attacker not only has high-level permissions from a Windows network, but he also has high-level permissions to your, v your vSphere network. So I am a fan of Segmenting those credentials, have you make use of the local credentials for vSphere, and that way, if you have a super strong password, segmented credentials, if someone compromises those other network credentials, you know that your vSphere environment is still, at least from that standpoint, not compromised if you have compromised credentials uh, from Active Directory, uh, as an example. And uh, this also goes with backup environments. Uh, get your backup environments off the network, quote unquote. Uh, what I mean by that is get those backup servers away from Active Directory so that if you do have a outbreak of ransomware, there's no chance that that ransomware has permissions from a network permissions level to access those file stores. And there's other 
really great backup technologies that help take care of that. Um, so that that is just one of the uh, basic things that we can uh, make use of as a best practice, uh, making sure those credentials are segmented along with other newer technologies, immutable backups, and so forth. So once again, let's just highlight, uh, we've went over patching your vCenter environment. Make sure you've got those patches applied. Uh, number two is network segmentation. Get your vCenter server off of your production network and into a management network. If that's not possible, make use of the built-in firewall for vCenter server. And incidentally, as you well know, ESXi also has the uh, a local firewall that you can make use of to uh, prevent certain types of traffic or all traffic from certain network objects to your uh, ESXi hosts. And then finally, uh, think about your credentials. Segment those credentials also in the similar ideology that we're thinking of with the network. Make sure you have separate credentials for your vSphere environment as opposed to Active Directory. Bad things can happen when both have high level accounts that can do damage if an attacker grabs those, those credentials He's able not only to attack you from an Active Directory standpoint, he can also uh, attack and own your vCenter, uh, your vSphere environment. So I hope those uh, best practices and just kind of basic high-level things are helpful uh, in securing your vCenter server. Again, it's a very important part of the vSphere infrastructure. Uh, it's uh, pivotal if an attacker has access from an administrative standpoint of your vCenter server, they basically have everything. So things to keep in mind. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know your comments, maybe some things I missed, some things that you've made use of uh, to help secure your environment that can help others watching this video or looking at the comments. So uh, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video.